this isn't something that you agree with. No, we've done a lot of studies in older individuals giving them growth hormone. We expected to find that we'd increase their strength, that they would have greater exercise capacity, and that their quality of life would improve. But instead, we found very small changes in their body composition, and we found that there were a lot of side effects. People developed arthralgias, that is, pains in their joints. Their legs would swell up, and sometimes they'd end up with nerve entrapment in their hands. People have uh, not really uh, understood that these are very serious side effects, and in fact, in some patients, could lead to diabetes. We believe that growth hormones should not be used for individuals who have uh, otherwise healthy aging. So while these clinics are uh, proposing to give growth hormone, they're doing this under a cloud of illegality, and the federal government is now starting to clamp down on these physicians. Well, the truth is that many people can take these medications uh, without suffering severe side effects. I think that some of the advantages of the medications are overblown, certainly in the case of growth hormone. Um, but some people will uh, suffer from side effects, and it's those individuals uh, who I'm really most concerned with. You also have to realize that growth hormone, unlike testosterone, is enormously expensive. That the replacement uh, doses of growth hormone will cost up from five to $20,000 a year. And this is money that's going uh, uh, mostly to physicians who are breaking the law by prescribing growth hormone for non-indicated causes. Well, I think when you start looking at individual athletes, you have to recognize that almost none of them are taking a single medication. We know in, uh, in many cases they're taking uh, testosterone, other androgenic steroids, growth hormone, and probably other medications we're totally unaware of. So it's very hard to look at a single individual and say, I want to be like that guy. You have to recognize these athletes are all superb athletes. They are all exercising dramatically. They watch their diet. It's not just taking a drug that's going to make you happy and healthy. The only time we've really seen those kinds of results with growth hormone have been in patients who are really exercising dramatically, who are on low-calorie diets and are under uh, the care of, uh, of an exercise physiologist and a physician. I think that a, an individual cannot expect that giving, getting growth hormone injections are going to make a major change. We decided to look at the effects of growth hormone in older people and we reviewed all of the world's literature. There, aren't, there have not been that many studies, but the conclusion that we reached by comparing all the results was that growth hormone caused very small changes in fat mass and in muscle mass in older individuals. But many of these individuals had serious side effects, and we cannot recommend growth hormone for healthy elderly people. We've all been looking for the fountain of youth, and I think it's really within ourselves. The best thing we can do to prevent some of the bad changes of aging is to continue to exercise and to eat moderately. If individuals exercised more, I think we'd find that they had fewer complaints regarding their body composition, regarding their strength, and regarding, regarding their sex lives. Wow, you know, okay. How's that? <laughs> that was really good. I um, want to get 